Maybe you have heard horror stories about some of the issues that people, creators get to here on YouTube with YouTube themselves, legal problems, things like that. And we are here to talk to you guys about how you can never get into legal trouble or problems with YouTube. Well, maybe not never, but we'll help you avoid <laughs> almost all of them coming up right after this. Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer and welcome to Video Creators. This channel is all about helping you guys grow your YouTube audience so you can spread a message that reaches people and impacts their lives. And it's really hard to do that if your channel gets shut down. You're not reaching anybody. This is Jeremy from J House Vlogs and he is also an attorney and you just spoke, we're at an event, you can tell we're in a hotel room. He spoke about... Um, the legal side of YouTube. Yeah, which is something that a lot of people don't get into at all. So yeah. I'll put links to his channel, stuff down below, you can go check it out. But when we start our, you were, you were saying um, in this talk, you know, when we start our, our, our whole entire journey with YouTube, it starts based on lies. Yeah, anytime you start a partnership with YouTube, typically we start by lying to YouTube by saying that we've read the terms and conditions and understand it. And I agree. So the terms of service are just, I think, 14 paragraphs and it can change, so that's what it is currently. But when you include all of the things that are included in that, the community guidelines and the policies that apply as well, it's over 120 pages wow. of stuff that you're agreeing to with YouTube. Yeah, so what we wanna do with you guys is just walk through some of the things that you agreed to and talk about it in normal conversational English. Uh, because it's pretty common for creators to violate some of these in seemingly innocent ways yeah. and they don't even know that they are breaking it and could have their channels taken down, their videos removed. Yeah. Um, for what they thought was kind of innocent. And just to say too, while I am an attorney, this isn't at any way supposed to be legal advice. I'm just talking about some of the things I've learned in looking at the community guidelines from YouTube. So yeah. what's, what's one of the first things we should I, think about? One of the most basic things is a lot of YouTubers do giveaways. And there's a policy that YouTube has on giveaways and there may be laws in your state There probably are on sweepstakes. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that you can easily Google and look up. And YouTube does a good job of putting into plain English what is and is not allowed. Like you need to have official rules that are clearly laid out so that mm -hmm. there's clear expectations of winners, losers, and how it's gonna work. Right. A lot of people don't do that. Say that there was a disgruntled person who felt like they got cheated in that and they took that to YouTube, that video could come down. Yeah, and you could have even more serious problems than that, I would, I would assume, too. Yeah, you could get a strike. And again, yeah. if you get three strikes for community guidelines, your channel's gone. Yeah. There's also a lot of rules that apply to paid sponsorships. Mm -hmm. And any of you guys who want to do brand deals and you want to work with you know, sponsors who pay you to talk about their stuff on their channel, there's some things that a lot of creators miss, too. What are some of those things? Yeah, again, YouTube has policies on what specifically you're supposed to do. If you're using a sponsored endorsement or a brand deal in one of your content, YouTube says that you need to notify us mm -hmm. of that. And the way you do that is in posting the video, you go to the advanced settings and click a box. And again, you can go into the help center of YouTube and I'll show you exactly what box to push. Yeah. There's also regulations on this in the United States, like the FTC has rules of how you're supposed to disclose and what the overriding principles are. And you just can't be misleading. Right. You can't be using stuff for free from someone or using stuff where you're getting paid to do it and not let people know that. Or if you don't get paid, because this is a common thing you guys ask in comments of previous questions or on these topics, uh, previous videos on these topics, is where you say, well, I'm not getting paid, they're just giving it to me for free, so it's not really a sponsorship, so I don't need to say anything, is that true? One of the things that I'll say to anybody is go to the source. A lot of times when people face these kinds of questions, they'll go to a Facebook page or they'll just ask people. Yeah. I like to go to the source, so I'll go to the FTC, they have a frequently asked questions page, and they bring up this exact thing and they say, look, if a brand is giving you something free to incentivize you to promote it, that's something that should be disclosed and it's yeah. misleading to not disclose it because you are being incentivized. It's something that should be told. Yeah. yeah, I think the main key is you have to go to the source and YouTube is the person you have the contract with and they have their guidelines really clear. You can just Google in community guidelines YouTube and they have really easy in English, it's not mm -hmm. in legalese, so it's understandable. And they lay down, here's the things you can't do. And they have more information and they give examples of what you can and can't do. I'll put a link in the description below, make it easily accessible for you. So there's yeah. no excuse. Yeah, you can, go, you can go check it out. So one of the topics they have is spam and the metadata side. And something that I know YouTubers did a while ago was they yeah. would put in their description box, tags. Yeah, or they were just like just keyword stuff. And yeah. like not writing a sentence or anything, they just like, 
just take like all the keywords, copy and paste it into like the bottom, thinking that yeah. that would help their video rank better for those things, which isn't yeah. how it works anymore. But And YouTubers have had hundreds of their videos taken down from before. And one of the things that you gotta be aware of with YouTube is that you can get in trouble retroactively. I mean, mm -hmm. if you posted those videos back in 2010, but they now have discovered that, you can be punished for yeah. it, even though it's been up for the last six years. And it's happened. Like there have mm -hmm. been big creators with millions of subscribers who have had their channels taken down because they had all the, like their keywords we're stuffing all these tags into the descriptions yeah. and titles and things like that. So another one of the community guidelines is not showing dangerous content. And people get into trouble with this if they're showing stuff that is encouraging danger or putting children in danger. And that's something that they really are concerned about. And sometimes this comes into some of those challenges that you see. You know YouTubers want to put extreme stuff online because people like to yeah. see the spectacle. It's clickbaity. But if you're getting flagged because people are saying this is just too dangerous or it's encouraging people to do dangerous things, you could get that video taken down, get a strike. Yeah. And if you get several strikes, you get the channel taken down. And sometimes it can be something that's very innocent that like, uh, like they have a family vlogging channel you can check mm -hmm. it out link below sure um, and so in that niche of family vlogging sometimes people do things innocently with their kids a few examples I've heard Jeremy give is like um, uh, videoing your child in the bathtub you know sure I mean there's that. guidelines on nudity and stuff oh, like yeah, that you know that, yeah or or um, just like chubby bunny challenges yeah. or things that like, oh, they could potentially choke or yeah. something that could there be Yeah, there was dangerous. the challenge that was really popular about putting nylon on your head and kind of doing a tug of war. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that with a lot of adults, but when kids started doing it, YouTube did respond to some creators saying, hey, that's risk of choking yeah. and we don't want to encourage people to do that. And so people got in trouble for yeah. doing that. Yeah. There are guidelines as well on inappropriate adult content, you know, nudity, things like that. But even a family vlogger could get in trouble if they're posting their kid in the bathtub and not mm -hmm. thinking about it. Yeah. And that can lead to the kind of problems that the community guidelines say shouldn't be in there. So we will keep our shirts on for the duration <laughs> of this video for you. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, copyright is a huge topic. We could make probably five or six videos on that. I know I Tim have. has some good some, videos on copyright. Yeah. Um, but that's an Thanks, area <laughs> that if you're violating copyright of other people, they, they actually have it as a whole separate category where if you get three strikes for copyright, it'll come down. Yeah. And then the community guidelines are a separate category, but copyright yeah. is a huge deal. Yes, so I personally try to avoid using any content that I did not create myself unless I can purchase a license to use it for commercial purposes on YouTube. So like royalty-free music, uh, stock video photos, things like that where I can get a license. But I, I mean, there's a lot of channels that are based on fair use. We're not gonna get into all that here, but that is something you really need to be careful of and know going into it what you're doing and what the guidelines are and maybe even consult a lawyer call what like it might cost you some money but it's way worth it in the front end to have that conversation with someone who can really give you some good advice about your projects and your videos that you're making before you start putting all the work into it and then losing it all another part of the community guidelines that you agreed to is no hateful content and no threats What's hard with some of these is that it can be subjective. Very subjective. And YouTube is the decider. And that's one of the things you agree to in the terms of service is that, you know, YouTube made these rules, they can change them, and they are enforcing them and they interpret them. Yeah. And so there's a lot of power there for YouTube. There have been times where people felt like they were unfairly dealt with by YouTube and they brought lawsuits against YouTube. And from the ones I've researched, um, they haven't been successful because the contract is so strong in favor of YouTube of saying, right. look, you agreed to these things. If you don't want to use this platform, then don't. But if you want to use YouTube, these are the rules and right. we're able to dictate what's going to be happening on the platform. A lot of people don't want to face the expense of having an attorney and they get into really bad situations. They maybe sometimes lose a lot of money and then they wish they would have consulted yeah. an attorney. If you're ever in a situation where something's happening to you legally and you don't understand it, that's the time to have someone who does understand it to give you advice. Or in my case, like sometimes I go and do these things thinking I understand it. Like, oh, I read it, I understand what's everything here. I always still though hire a lawyer to review my contracts and ask questions to you because it is always so helpful when they come back and like, yes, you understood, but what you don't understand is what they didn't put in here. And sometimes mm -hmm. the things they don't include in the contract are actually more significant than the things that are in the contract. And so I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have never have known that. So I can go back and say, hey, you, we need to add this clause that says this and that. And my my, my lawyer takes good care, care of it. And uh, he's awesome because he really does a good job at teaching. So um, I'll put a link to his website in the description if you want to check it out. I'm not affiliated, no kickback. 
What other disclaimers do I have to give? Uh, <laughs> full disclosure, I have received no compensation whatsoever. I just think he's been really helpful for me. You know, I always recommend for people to go to the source, and YouTube does a great job of letting you know what is expected. Um, they have it written in English, that's clear. There can still be those gray areas, though, where there is interpretation needed, or you're not sure mm -hmm. exactly what it means. And those are times when it is especially good or important to consult with yeah. an attorney to make sure you understand what they're saying and what's expected. There's very real risks. Mm -hmm. And there's things you can do to mitigate those risks. I mean, that's the way an attorney yeah. would say it. But that's the concept is like, you know, so I mean, uh, Tim's whole message, I have watched most of your videos and have used them to help me uh, with, with our channel. And you put all this work and all this time into it. And it's been so sad to see friends or other people lose all that work based on not understanding these legal aspects. And the legal stuff can be boring. People don't want to talk about it or deal with it. But simple understanding of reviewing some of these things can make a huge difference in yeah. preventing a disaster for your channel. Yeah. So go read, everything is down there in the links in the description of this video. You'll find links to the terms of service, to the community guidelines. I know it's not gonna be fun, us creative people, we just like to make cool stuff that really impacts people. But it is worth the little bit of time, and the investment you're gonna make to learn and educate yourself so that you don't lose all the hard work you're gonna be putting into this in the future. I'm really looking forward to reading your comments below. Leave your comments and your questions down there and the comment on each other's stuff. Thumbs up the questions that people are asking that you're like, oh, Tim, you guys didn't fill in this gap. We won't really want to hear more about that or about something else. So I will use your comments down there, your questions that you're leaving to maybe use for as ideas for future videos. So thumbs up the ones that you want me to do and then I will try to bring in some other people who can talk intelligently about some of these things to give you guys some answers the best that we can. Hope you guys find this valuable. Subscribe if this is your first time here. We're all about helping you guys grow your YouTube audience so you can spread a message that reaches people and changes their lives. Thanks for hanging out. Check them out, link below, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. See you then, bye.